In this video, I will give an introduction to the generalized method of moments, also known as GMM. GMM is based on the set of population moment conditions. And the population moment conditions, that is a statement involving the data and the parameters of interest. Using a general notation, we can define the population moment condition G of the true parameters theta zero, and that is equal to an unconditional expectation of some function f that depends on the model variables wt, a set of instruments set t, and then the k by one vector of true parameters theta zero. And that unconditional expectation is equal to zero. Here, wt, that is a vector of model variables. We have set t, which is an r by one vector of instruments. We have our theta zero, which is a k by one vector of true parameters. And finally, we have the function f of wt set t theta zero. And this is just an r by one vector of functions. And note that that function can be linear in the model variables and in the instruments, or it can be a nonlinear function. So the dimensions we have over here, set t was an r by one vector theta zero was a k by one vector. So we have that k is the number of parameters. And we are interested in using the population moment conditions to derive a consistent estimator of the true parameters theta zero. Then we have r, that is the number of moment conditions we have. So that means that we have here r by one vector of population moment conditions. And this is all we need in order to get a consistent estimator of the true parameters theta zero. We say that the population moment conditions identify the parameters if the function g evaluate in some parameter vector theta is equal to zero if and only if theta is equal to the true parameters theta zero. So that means that the population moment conditions have a unique solution for theta equal to theta zero. In order to derive an estimator of the true parameters theta zero, we consider the sample moment conditions. We denote those G subscript capital T to indicate that we use sample length of capital T, evaluated in theta, and that is simply given by the sample average one over T, the sum from T equal one to capital T of the function F of W T set T theta. Now, whether we can derive an estimator from the sample moment conditions depend on the numbers R and K. First, if R is less than K, we have what we call under identification. In that case, the parameters theta zero are not identified. and they cannot be consistently estimated. So what we do in that case is we try to find a set of instruments that will give us a sufficient amount of moment conditions. In the second case, if R is equal to K, we have just identification. And in that case, we can derive the method of moments estimator.
theta hat m m. And we do that by solving the sample moment conditions evaluated in the estimator is equal to zero. So in that case, we have, for example, two moment conditions and two unknown parameters. So we can simply solve. We set the sample moment conditions equal to zero and we solve to find the estimator theta hat. In the last case, we have r greater than k. So we say that we have over identification. That means that we have more valid moment conditions than we need in order to estimate the k parameters. Note that this is a good thing and it allows us to derive the GMM estimator. And we're going to briefly outline how to do that next. So the idea behind the GMM estimator is that we want to find the GMM estimator as the k-dimensional vector theta hat GMM that minimizes the distance from the sample moment conditions to zero. So note that with over-identification, we have, for example, two sample moment conditions with one unknown parameter. So we cannot solve and find a unique solution. What we do instead is we choose the parameters as those parameters that will minimize the distance from the sample moment conditions to zero. In order to do that, we define what we call a quadratic form. And the idea here is that we transform the R sample moment conditions into a scalar term that we can minimize. So we define the quadratic form QT as a function of WT, that is a weight matrix, as the sample moment conditions transposed multiplied by a weight matrix multiplied by the sample moment conditions. And the dimensions here recall that the sample moment conditions were R by one, so this is going to be 1 by r, this is going to be r by 1, and then the weight matrix here is r by r. Note that this implies that the quadratic form becomes a scalar. Moreover, we define the weight matrix Wt to be a r by r symmetric and positive definite matrix. And the idea of the weight matrix is that it allows us to attach different weights to the different moments. A big deal in GMM estimation in practice is how to find the correct or the efficient weight matrix. We will discuss that in later videos. But note that because the weight matrix is positive, definite and symmetric, it implies that the quadratic form here is always going to be positive. So now we have transformed the R sample moment conditions into a scalar term given by the quadratic form QT given some weight matrix. Now we can derive the GMM estimator as the k-dimensional vector theta hat GMM given by R mean with respect to theta of the quadratic form given some weight matrix. So again, the idea is that we have R sample moment conditions. We define the quadratic form, which transforms the R sample moment conditions into a scalar term, and we derive the estimator, the GMM estimator, by minimizing the quadratic form. In practice, that means that we solve derivative with respect to the parameters theta, and we set that equal to zero. Note that here the quadratic form is a scalar term and note that the, we differentiate with respect to a k by one dimensional vector. So what we're going to get out here is k by one first order conditions. In general, we use numerical optimization. And then in some cases, we can find an analytical solution. Thanks for watching.